everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and we are at part two of the She's a Big Art Quest fairy tale. These are weekly meetups where we you can put up that picture. That's good. We're focusing on Mr. Al today, but you can show them the whole image. I'm cool with that. On the mic is my husband, John, flashing in pictures, hey flashing out pictures, flashing them and flashing them out. He is going to help us really get together and paint today by tracking us with cameras, letting you see how I'm mixing the paint on the palette, reading questions, just making sure that you can see everything you need to see so you can paint along with me. Now, the Big Art Quest fairy tale is really about leveling up. It's about bringing up our art skills and maybe challenging ourselves, maybe taking on something, you know, chewing a take a bite of a little something more than we normally would have. But we're going to break it down. We're going to make it like digestible. It's a little gruesome how I'm describing it today, but we're going to make it digestible. <laughs> Don't eat paint but digestible. And so through that, by meeting up, you're going to be able to really, really accomplish a painting far beyond what you currently probably feel like you can do. So to that end, we're going to be focusing on the owl part of this design today. So we're zooming and get all owly and hutacular, which is why I'm owled up on my jewelry and everything. And I'm ready just to get into it. Are you guys ready to get into it and have our power hour? Absolutely. <laughs> power hour. All right, let's jump and turn around. Oh, palette. I love to see my palette. Put my references to the side. Okay, so, so far today, what I'm feeling like I will be into is I will be into my yellow ochre, my burnt umber, my Mars black, my burnt sienna, uh, titanium white. I may bring another color in to warm it up or cool it down, depending, like I might pull some blue in. And actually, I probably could put in some phthalo blue right now. Since I know it's a potential possibility, why not have it just sitting there waiting for me, ready to be put out? Yep. I think this is going to be kind of a fun day. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen this, this is the finished image we're going for right here. I did this as a digital collage to put the design together as a reference. The last episode we got together and we used the gridding method to create this. All of this, if you like, check the description is in that description below. You can link to it and it take you to the website and all the references that you're seeing. You can download all these images you can grab for yourself and print out. And there's some color exchanges and extra info that will help you out. Now, hey, John. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of feedback. Have you? I have. I have. This one got me a lot of feedback. You might have noticed we even began with a down thumb. Uh, so no. I just want to, like, put some thought into this, like, the design concept of this. Huh. So, like... I have found in, uh, in mythology, sometimes when uh, women are awesome, like super awesome, they have superpowers, mm -hmm. they're, they're witches, witches, witch, right? Mm. And so, you know, you have these beautiful, these women, they have this cool superpower, they turn into barn owls. Barn owls are awesome. That seems pretty cool. I love barn owls. And so I felt like this is like one of those cases where like maybe like, you know, a girl's got power, and they're like, it's a witch. Because, like, think about it. Merlin turned into a bird, and they called him a wizard. Hmm. Right? And, and, and he did take a kid and make him a military <laughs> leader and put him into a child war. Nobody said boo to him about that. They're like, yeah, that's cool. So I kind of, like, was thinking, like, you know, that Maleficent point of view where I'm like, maybe she's just really cool, and she has a bar now power. Maybe. Kind of like Storm from X-Men. It's not a bad thing. They, they kind of witched her up a bit, too. So. <laughs> that's some of the feedback i've been getting and okay. there's my thinking i'm not saying i'm gonna change anybody's mind i just thought i'd crack everybody else up i think people that are already like they've made up their mind like you know they're there <laughs> i i think our in our marriage i have not had enough coffee for that conversation today i, really? I, was, just, I was not prepared for that i was like i was totally ready for you to lay something else on me I did not. I, thought, I was like, getting all wound up about it today. I was like, oh, man, Merlin did all this stuff. And he was like, cool. They're like, he's a wizard. He's awesome. Cave of wonder. See, I, I, this I lady were... turns into a barn owl, and all of a sudden she's going to be like kidnapping kids. Maybe she's not feeding the kids. We don't know. We, See, we don't know. I, I thought you were going to have like a cadmium moment or something. <laughs> you know, like you were going to go off on you know, Prussian this blue. This is more about the thought process behind art. <gasps> okay. So anyway, no, that's good. to that end. We're going to paint Mr. Owlface today, and we're going to yep. get a little more realistic. All right. We're going to get a little more realistic. We're going to be using these nice colors to kind of really work him in and maybe get his little feathers in. I'll probably have to be using my vision enhancers today, right, As you to do. see the painting. <laughs> well, let's begin by blocking it in. 
Okay. Let's like start kind of just painting an overall value that he might be. And I've got to, I'm going to pick, I'm going to make stuff easy for myself. I'm going to grab my number four cat's tongue. You could use a number four filbert or round. You just want a brush that lets you work in this space comfortably, but isn't so tiny, so teeny tiny that you can't get it done. Because sometimes you guys get your most detailed brush and you're like, painting takes me a really long time. It's just, I'm here for eight hours and I look at the size of the brush and it could paint on rice. So I'm just saying, you got to get a big enough brush to get in here and get this done. All right, so I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to dip it in my water. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dip it in my water and I'm going to load up with a little bit of my yellow ochre and I'm going to sneak over and grab some of my Mars black and I'm going to make this sort of yellow gray, right? Fabulous yellow gray. And I'll go ahead and get some white involved there. I did not know. That's yellow ochre, isn't it? Yes, yellow ochre. I didn't know that that and and um, like phthalo blue together make some of my favorite color combinations. You didn't know that? I I just like just found I, out today. You got the memo. Well, it was this I, just in: phthalo blue and yellow ochre make some color combinations that John Cooney rather likes. I I well, I learned it a little while ago, but I was still surprised because. <laughs> I did not think I was going to be a yellow ochre person. Yellow ochre is very cool. It seems. I think in the 70s we called it goldenrod. Anywho. (laughs) Yeah. It seemed so that 70s show. Somewhere there's a refrigerator that some sherbet is looking at right now going, I think it's yellow ochre. I think it's ochre. Okay. So So, I'm going to come here. I'm not going to paint his face in. You'll notice I'm kind of delicately painting around the face. And that's because we're just working a couple value sets, right? But most of him, we're going to be done here. This is it. This is all we're doing. <laughs> okay. This whole show is a prank on your life. No. So we're going to come in here. We're going to just paint him in sort of in this range. Now, when I come here, I'm going to be sort of soft with this brush stroke because I know I'm going to want to really capture that feather texture. So everything about now is just getting those under values in that we can sort of shade up from. Hmm. So we're going to, sh- we're going to shade his tube. We're going to go, he's a tube. What are the basic values? And then we will get detail oriented. Now, a lot of his foot is sort of hidden. That doesn't mean that we can't talk about it a little bit, even though we know much, much of the barn owl is hidden. I can't believe there's like, there's so much like, like negative press on barn owls. They're so cute. Like, do they do another thing I don't understand? Like, are they pesty? Mm. It seems like they just eat mice. I think you would want them all over your barn. Well, yeah, they put a little barn. Pla- There's like a whole industry to make plastic barn owls to hang out. Well, those are those are usually the big the big owls. Yeah, I don't know. Barn owls are so cute. Well, I they and when they sit a mouse, in a little row, they're like, oh my gosh! Like when they're all in a little stump. If you're anything the best smaller thing ever. than an owl, you should be afraid. Oh no, owls are not friendly to small rodents. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> it's not actually i'm just gonna go like this i'm gonna ah, re-put in his go? eyes i don't really need that right now right now i just want to catch capture some values and some shapes so it's just easier for me to be like hey okay i'm gonna go ahead and make a half shade up from this right lighten it a bit let me get in here whoop, 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 whoop. and we're gonna just say oh maybe maybe some of this is a little bit lighter in other parts of this, and we can talk a little bit about it, layering it up, you know. We're going to just be here a second. We're going to be detail-oriented today, John. Mm-hmm. Detail-oriented. What do you think about that? Um, I... I'm going to get a little gray in there. He's like, I don't know. I'm just switching the cameras, darling. Well, you need an opinion, man. <laughs> I think that you left your sandwich and over here at Twix. The is dog is getting it. Yeah. The dog is like, unclaimed food. <laughs> it was the pork last night. It just it just threw off the power sk- <laughs> the power balance. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and put this at the front of the, the leg that we've got going here. And so these are just you can see I'm just kind of talking maybe a little bit about value. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now we're we're wanting to say like what's light, what's dark, you know, get a little little of that represented. And if you need to get into it a little more, you you're like into it a little more, you can in a couple of places. Like let's go. Oh my goodness! Now that's a cat's tongue, right? This is a cat's tongue. You could use a filbert or a round. And you're using a lot of the brush strokes to create 
kind of that yeah feather feeling yeah yeah feathery feathers feathers how you guys doing so are you guys getting that in so what let's go over it we put kind of a more warm wing here you might look here and go oh yeah well there's a lot more reds and browns and things so that that's as we get into these details that's going to help us get through there and it's still a lot darker over here than all these feathers but what this is doing is helping us get the basis so we can get those like little fluff shapes and we've got to get in here and do his face i wish his face were a little bit bigger mm. like a like a bigger 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 mm. it's your it's your drawing i guess you could make it bigger it's my art i'll do with it as i see fit yes i will all right now i'm gonna get a round brush and i'm going to put on my vision <gasps> enhancers you've had coffee today I'd i've say. had coffee today and i feel really good i could i would say so and i'm gonna make this this little heart okay, face a little bit bigger like what i'm seeing in my photo right we're gonna expand. shape this up and be like hey no man no man now as we're going we're gonna be doing more realism on this today we're gonna focus on this owl as long as we can take it can you take it today <laughs> I don't know. Can you take it? I can take it. Can you take it? I'm fine with realism. We'll see. <laughs> you know, you got to watch for those little doubt demons, though. They sneak into your studio, whisper in your ear, make you question yourself. You know what I mean, John? Have you ever heard the doubt demon? <laughs> I have guardian gnomes. <laughs> you have guardian gnomes that only you see. Well, that can happen to artists. We get a little doubt demon going. A little, you'll never accomplish anything on this painting. No. <laughs> so if I... you hear that, you got to tell it to stop it. Quit it. Quit it. Doesn't get a vote. I'm going to take a little of my black over to my Burt Umber. Doubt demon gets no vote. And I'm going to just very softly, you know, start to talk about this fabulous little feather lining. Cause like there's this cool thing where like the feathers kind of like lay flat on the face, but they're all thickly lined. It's very cool. Now, you switched brushes. I did. I switched to a number four round. Number four. I wanted to be like fussy in here. I wanted to be able to get fussy. When we're trying to get realistic. We tend to get more fussy, right? We could have painted this loosely, it could loosely, loosey goosey, but that's actually very stressful for beginners. And we're trying to get some more of our art skills in here. So we're going to paint a little more realistically. And do you know what that means, John? Art skills? Patience. So the art skill, the most important art skill that you have for painting more realistically is being patient because somewhere in here, you're going to really question everything. You're going to be like, man, this is, I'm still here and there's still all these little feathers. Like how many of these things am I gonna, I gotta, what has happening? I'm just still painting all these little feathers. So it's important, you know, to, uh, to be taking care of yourself. Self-care right about now is very important. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty good. You I'm gonna go ahead and get back into our, kind of our yellow and white mix. And I still have just this brush. I'm gonna just, Make sure. Now, you'll notice here, that hopefully John can zoom in, and I'll try not to lean in. Don't lean in. Don't lean in. There's so much to do. And I'm going to just very slightly make these little brush strokes, which imply a feather, don't they? They do. They're, they're starting a rumor all over my canvas about a feather. You gotta, it's a good place to gossip is your canvas. You want to start lots of rumors. Start all those rumors, man. Start them up. You know, I'm seeing something that is really annoying me. Uh, what's that? That the gridding did not go away. What? You seen that? No. You're not seeing the gridding well, on see my the grid. surface? Yeah, I see all the grid. We painted over that. Oh, wait, no. Did we? I don't think. Is it going away? Or did I just forget to take it out? I think, you know... I'd have to rewind last So some show. people have been telling me lately that the Serol paper isn't coming up. And I, oh wait, I didn't use Serol. I used chalk here, didn't I? You did chalk, I think. I used chalk and maybe I pressed too hard. 
Sometimes if you press too hard, I just got to make sure it'll come up. Okay, I'm going to be able to get it up. Good to know. <laughs> There's a art panic happening. That was irritating happening. me deeply. There is a small art panic happening. Art panic brain. attack is happening right now. And you can see it happening inside. <laughs> this is live. Watch an artist freak out. No edits. Yeah, them other punks were edit. They don't want you to know. They want to curate it. They're like, I only ever paint perfect paintings all the time. I have no mistakes in my studio, none at all. Everything is always perfect. How Nothing come, ever goes wrong. How come every time we want to say, like, imply perfect, we use an English accent? Because Mary Poppins. It's real simple. I'm sorry. It's, that's what happened. Mary Poppins happened. They're all proper, and so that's what they get. Yeah, she's perfect and magical. And so, therefore, that happened. She good PR. <laughs> I, th I think it was my fair lady for me. Oh, yeah, that too. But she was not perfect. Eliza Doolittle was not perfect. And that's kind of a sexist movie. I don't know. It's hard to watch. You know, it, given, when it was written, given when it was written, I'm not going to be mad at it. It was a musical, and it was like I'm a just long, saying, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. doesn't pan out right now, does it? In middle C. You can just see me work. I'm like, <laughs> You're just scrubbing. I, I, I'm... <gasps> You just what work that is surface. going on? Is Are it gone okay? yet? You know we're live. Yeah, I know we're live. This is go ahead now. Now feel free, feel free, internet. Two thumb down. <laughs> now there's a reason, not because the owl, but because of this. Have a blast. I'm gonna continue fixing my painting with my people who get it. They get it. They get it. That's why we do this. We don't fake it. Till we make it. Mm. I should have done this before I painted down the background. Mm. But you can see it's coming up. It just took a little work from it. You just took some scrubbing. I'm just scrubbing. And hey, maybe it's good to know that you can do that. All right, I will get back to the owl. But, you know, I will probably fuss with this later. Feel free to fuss at home. Now I have all this weird hair in my face and I've lost my veneer that I didn't have at all. So this is an interesting thing. What you see out there, 99% of the stuff you see on Instagram, 99% of the stuff you see out there that's edited and uploaded is super cur curated. All these moments, all these little ahs have been erased. And only the slick veneer of perfect creativity births into the universe with no effort is ever presented to you which gives you a highly false expectation that you should be having a similar experience. I love sharing all like my crazy moments because when you're having a crazy moment in your own studio going, what happened with this material? You go, oh, it's okay. It's okay because you saw me be okay, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can all be mad about them Photoshopping like women in Vogue and, and we should, that's cool. But just know same thing happens out there on Instagram and all the places that artists share art. You don't see like all the mistake paintings. Hey, they're there though you know in the back of the studio being ready to be adjusted over i promise you they are now some of their mistakes are pretty awesome and you're like i don't really know it's a mistake but to each artist their own version of that you know i was thinking mm -hmm. the other day if we just apply this is not coffee this is lemonade i'm being good hmm. oh never mind if lemonade. we just applied what big art quest it's the chill time this is why we quest this is not what we usually do normally we hurry well we the big art quest is about watching me be manic. Yeah. So did you so did you get it all off? Well I, well, I mean, to the degree that I need to, then I'll, I will keep messing with it. You can see it's still kind of bleeding up. I think what I'll do is I'll have to rework some of this background. All right. Actually, let me show you fix that. Okay. We're live for a reason. I don't remember what I used originally. <laughs> can mm. anyone shout out the colors I had on the background? Was it Prussian? I... I need somebody to let me I'll know, look, man. Look, I know it was I'm zinc. Looking, I'm looking. They know. They know everything I'm doing. I'm going to put out some pressure. Ugh. I'm going to shake that up. That's separation. Urgh. There we go. I inferred. You inferred? No, the, the first big art quest page was with the material. I don't see my zincs. My my mixing whites. 
Do I need to go find some? Uh, I don't need to put out more of that. You might need to, but I think you should let them tell you what we're missing and we'll just keep trugging along and they'll be like, okay. somebody's going to go look because this is the internet. And if nothing else, it fact checks you. It spell corrects you, for helps you work on your grammar, helps you work on your spelling and fact checks you. So I'm going to just allow the internet to tell me what colors I used. It will. I found it. You didn't trust the internet, now you're going to pay. But there's a delay on the internet. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> sorry about the errand I just said you went, that John went and took care of. So rude. All right. Yes? Uh, Bert Oak, uh, Yellow Ochre, Bert Sienna, Bert Umber, Cad Yellow, uh, Red, uh, Red, Cad Red. No, no. Indian. I know the full list. I put all the materials that would be used in this painting, oh. period. But I just need to know what we used on that video. Just that. Oh. I'm going to work it out. You don't know. I see what you're saying. <laughs> can I, I, can I, I scamper out and get my zinc? It's, yeah, you can. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll scamper I'll out and get so my zinc. I did, I did a quick search. It is the burnt umber, and uh, it looks like it's a blue. Maybe. I could, they'll tell me, I'm sure. It could be Thalo. could be Thalo. It could be Thalo. She came over and looked at my screen. I came and looked at John's screen. Oh, I've got my curtains, and I'm back in there the studio. Is. Hi. I'm going to put this out because I'm Prussian. not messing with it. Tammy says Prussian. Thank you, Tammy. Ding, 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 ding. Tammy goes to the front of the class and gets an imaginary apple. Somebody threw down an apple emoji for Tammy. That would be cool. We should... Throw down an apple for, I'm going to, well, okay, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my burnt umber here. I'll put this on. And we're going to just go like this. Okay. And just real quick, I'm going to just kind of do something about. This annoying grid. So that's something that we deal with. If you're re in our book club, you're reading about Turner and like the fact that paintings were faded eight days later. <laughs> he was not caring. He was like, whatever. I painted it already. That was the only part that mattered to me. So I'm just kind of reworking my background real quick to fix the mistake. Hmm. Because in art, when we have a mistake, do we scream and run into the street? Do we scream and run into the street? Try not to. Sometimes. Let's be honest, sometimes. But our neighbors are used to it by now. They just True. peer through their little curtains. I'm just adding a little bit of blue there. I'm just trying to rework this where that grid goes away. And now before I paint her, I'm going to wash out all those little grid bits. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to work that out. We're going to talk about that, aren't we? about that grid this is the painting we'll paint it three times and we don't care because artists are artists all the time what do you think of that i like it we're not afraid of making mistakes only punks are afraid of making mistakes <laughs> that's what i'm going with this weekend <laughs> But that's the thing. Sometimes we put so much of ourselves into our painting, the idea that it could be judged unfairly or critically or that, that sense, that expectation, that self-imposed expectation of that everything we've got to do, especially in our painting, needs to be executed flawlessly and without any effort and without problem. That's just not a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. Any more that I was going to grow another six inches and weigh 99 pounds when I was growing up. <laughs> Kate Middleton, not my future. Or Alec Ramsey, so many disappointments of my youth. I don't know who those people are. You don't know who Alec Ramsey is? Divorce. I thought I <laughs> thought Alex Ramsey was related to Chef Ramsey. <laughs> no. So No. No. You don't know your wife. I don't. You don't know me. Now we have to have a conversation after the video about Alec Ramsey. And that's fair because you made me talk about the Suzuki today. All right. I think I've gotten rid of the grid. <laughs> now be good. Behave. Sometimes if you tell your painting to just behave, it helps. Let it know who's boss. Indeed. 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 Indubitably. What am I going to do now? Back to painting the owl. 
<laughs> How nice is that? <laughs> so I'm going to get a little black over into my uh, burnt umber, which is technically burning it a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and start to talk about our little eyes. Love their little, their little barn owl eyes are so awesome. How could you like look at this and be like, oh, it's Eva. It's just like, I mean, seriously. You know, June bug, sure. I get that. So you'll notice that the beak is like way down here. So one of the big points when you're doing these guys is on the proportions, just to make sure that you've got stuff like, the beak down by the, down by the front, down by the boardwalk, down by the sea. I'm painting. It's had some lashes. We're going to just put these nice little shapes in. Look at these little eye shapes. The line comes up and kind of arcs over. We've got this nice dip. By now, maybe you're starting to see some, some little eye trends out there. Right? Mm. Little eye trends that are happening, that are going on. Now I'm going to get my white involved, like you do. Cream that up. And we're going to start talking about the space of feathers that is kind of coming around here, the shading of them. I don't know if you knew that there was shading in these feathers because sometimes when things are white, it's hard to see the values. Mm. But they do; they have values, and you want to you want to see the values, like ooh, do, 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 do. making the zones. This is like owl contouring. We're gonna contour this owl. We're gonna contour this owl, make it all gorgeous, right? I'm going to get back so John can zoom in and you can see all the fiddly little bits. Fiddly, fiddly. So it's important to realize that having to fiddle with certain things is super normal. The normal part of growing up as an artist to have to fiddle. This nice little kind of shadowing that happens around here. And then, of course, under the beak, there's a bit of a shadow, too. Now we're starting to get the shadowing. And how do we address that? We just go right up into the next layer of white. Shade up, right? Shade it up. Even more, I'm going to rinse out. I want one more shade up. And I still had too much brown pigment in there, so that's why I rinsed out and got more white again. But I did it in the spot where I had that brown pigment. I just want it lighter, just not white. I have to reserve the white for something else. So right now we're using the direction of our brush strokes to kind of talk about the feathers. That's lovely, right? Yeah. And then uh, they, they kind of come around here. So, underneath the eye coming around here. So, AEC would like to know. AEC, hi AEC. Why wouldn't you, she has a longer name. Why wouldn't you use a damp brush trick to erase the grid? But I did. I didn't work. It you must have work. come in later. It, yeah, just didn't work good. It didn't, it didn't. I pressed too hard into the painting to get it to show on the video. And, and it, then I had painted sort of over it, which sort of sealed it and just created a whole bunch of problems for me. I think that wasn't super evident that the water wasn't taking it off. Dude, it wasn't. That's why she was kind of scrubbing a little bit. Yeah. That's why I was like, I was like, I'm going to scrub my, my shame right off this canvas, but it didn't. <laughs> so we had to go another way. Now you're, are you using... Uh, mixing white or no, just the titanium white just right now. I haven't white. even gotten to the tint white. I don't even have that out because the other thing. I'm just right now trying to build up the layers around Mr. Owl face so we can see the the kind of patterning and thing that happens. 
around their little faces. Now I'm going to get a little of my yellow into that. Oh yeah, like that. I'm going to start thinking about the beak. And you're just trying to start thinking about our beak. Maybe grab some just white. Talk about like the ridge that's coming down. Because that'll happen. And then sometimes, you know, you can like almost give a shape by shading what's underneath. See? So you're able to create some more kind of depth and dimension than maybe you meant to. There we go. Because we're just making this be quite sharp. And we're going to just play with that till we get it there. You have to be able in art to face the moments where things aren't going how you hoped. Super critical. Very important. That you as an artist can handle that. Because I promise you it will happen a lot. You know, and your ability to be just like, let's give a little more, given just some more values here. Because we're talking about quite a lot of texture and effect that we've got to show around the face. So what do I do when I'm doing per, when I'm doing something and I'm trying to paint it more objectively as I see it? I want to paint what I see. Er. How do I do that? Well, I just breathe in. And breathe out and just make sure that I'm taking things in. Uh, you want to take it slow, like you're dating. Take it slow. <laughs> Get to know each other a little bit before, you know, stuff gets crazy. Rinse out. Yep. I'll put a little of my white on here. Kind of see I'm thinning it and improving it. I'm going to start really structurally trying to talk about some of that feathering. So see how these little feathers curve up here and kind of interjoin? Mm. That's what we're doing. We're really detailing that out. And then as they kind of come down, they sort of do an opposite move and you kind of want to catch the fan. And there we go. We have that feathered inside. Hopefully the camera can get right in on it and really see it. Oh, yeah, I can. I John can is hold. amazing like that. And I'm trying not to lean in too much. Looks great. And overwhelm it. I'm going to bring this back here. And then right here, it kind of comes in a little more. But interestingly enough, it's here that we start to see. That happened more. Dip in water and I'm thinning, not over thinning, I'm just wanting to make the paint more fluid. Because I'm working with heavy body paint, not fluid paint. So I just make it more fluid with my water. Just on the tip of the toe of my brush. I'm making having these little conversations about white feathers. It's involved, man. Mm -hmm. It's why a lot of people give up. Because <laughs> they're it like, takes, wait. It takes layers. Now I'm yeah. doing the little detail feathers around that beak. In there. And maybe there's a little bit right here. See how I just go. Look at those tiny little motions. 
You just got to, sometimes you got to have tiny little motions. Sometimes you just got to work it out, man. Look at those. We're getting involved. We're getting into it. It is coming together quite We're getting into it. We've overcome our grid problem. But you know what we didn't do? What's that? We didn't go. No, 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 we either, you know, run out of the, you know, the metaphorical house screaming all over. I could run out of the non-medical metaphorical house. Screaming. Do you need to? Am I freaking you out that much today? Nah. How is everybody doing? Good. Are we like at 25 thumbs down? Um, I haven't checked. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't, it's I don't. that kind of a day. <laughs> I don't want to know. I've yeah. actually, I've been watching the switcher and trying to nurse my cup of coffee because I'm super I have um I don't know like when you get road dreary you're have, oh like I'm sorry I'm trying to keep the energy up oh yeah you're totally boring me to sleep I'm so sorry babe that's what it is you're <laughs> no you've been doing great no, what happens is I get so focused on what you're doing that's what I'm trying. I'm just trying to give him a little, his little faces, right? It is. It's very intense what you're doing. Uh, I'll get some more white. It is intense, right? I'm going to just bring in some of these little over. feathers. They kind of come in at the beak, but we still see the shadow, right? <clears throat> I'm going to get just some pure white. I'm going to make sure there's some right at the top of that beak. Look at that. I like that. Take that. Back into a little black and brown. And make sure that I've got this sort of addressed. You can come right back in here. Bringing that eye over. I love their little faces. They're my favorites. Yeah. I love burn owls. Now. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to get a little more black over on that other eye. Oh, he's doing his thing. He's being his little man. Isn't he wonderful? Yeah. Where's my number four cats? I'm going to go back into that. Back into that number four cats. See what we got here. So I'm going to get a little of my yellow out and some of my titanium white. I'll make sure it's flowing enough so I can get, you know, control of the paint. But not so much that it's thin. And let's start. Maybe talking a little bit about these feathers. And you can see I'm letting the brush really start to define that little space. But I'm leaving room for another uh, white on top of that. And what size is this one? This one's just the number four. You could use a filbert or a round, though. I could have stayed on the round. You just like to mix it up. I like to mix it up, man. That's my preference. Keep guessing. Keep guessing. You yeah. don't need to. Trying to confuse you guys. You could technically guys. do this with very few brushes, so don't feel pressure because you don't actually have pressure. Now, over here, I'm pressing less hard because I want more of that dark value sort of show through. And I'm going to scoop right here. I want to really, you know, talk about those billows. And Mr. Other Pants has going here. Oh. And that's another reason. Come up with 
front of the leg and just make sure we've got something happening. Another reason it's super important, I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna in here, because you'll see that there's some of that brown in this mix. That sort of warmed red brown. I'm just making sure that under what is the wing, we're starting to see these feathers. Isn't that nice? I'm going to yeah. get back from it and take a look. You guys discuss. Oh yeah, he's looking good. So that's the important thing. You got to get away from your artwork yeah. periodically. This turned out really nice. Turned out. If we're still going, babe. Well, you know. I'm adding a little of my burnt umber to this, and I'm gonna come back here and turning it. Talk about this kind of more rust feather. Get scooping here. We'll start to add these dots. Now the little wing, if you'll notice, it comes forward. And then there's this little scoop. And then there's a lot of long scoopies. I'm using this sort of brown to sort of sketch it. Then right here, there's a little grip of flower of feathers. Flowers, feathers, same thing. Up the back. A little more brown into that. Up the back here. So uh, we just know we've got a break. We have these little zones, these layers, these groupings. And then there's a, another little layer to pay attention to here. So a little of this brown down. I know I'm going to need it in a minute. All right. Now, while all that's having, while you're having a thought about that, go ahead and grab your little detail brush again. And since it's out, grab some Prussian blue. <laughs> And your uh, tinting white. And we're going to start this with a blue, tinted blue reflection. It's going to come across the top here. And then it's also right here. Need a little more. Just start to shade out that reflection. Just rinsed out, and I'm getting just my tint white. I missed that part. That yeah, I got just tint white. I rinsed out and got some just tint white. A little much right there. I'm going to have some titanium white there, but I want some subtleness in what I'm doing. And then I'm going to get just some of that strong titanium white on the tip of my brush. I'm going to get back and make sure I have made a little cross-eyed. So on these guys, because when you're up close on it, it can look like pupils, you've got to get back from it to see if you've overdone or not overdone. And you want it, but you want just so little. So what I'm doing is softening that there. There we go. Perfect. Now it looks like that. And come back and get some just pure, pure black. And you can sometimes even add and improve. I don't know, like the coolness of the blue deepens the black. Mm, that makes sense. You can deepen that and make those eyes even more than what they are, which is nice. So his eyes are great. Back into his little feathers. I grab a little of my brown. I'll make some little kind of hidden spots that I know I'm going to want later. It's okay, too, to take this and find some little areas to piece out a little of what is his little feather cowering around. We don't do this on the beginner, beginner um, episodes because it's just a lot for, you know, a one hoop painter. Mm -hmm. But as you paint the one hoop paintings and then you take on two hoop paintings and as you kind of master two hoop paintings and move on to three hoop paintings, you need more. 
go ahead and get the black brown in together. And I'll add some white to it. We want a little shadow under his, his little chin here. I'm going to very gently work out. You can see we're easily, easily doing. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Just showing that little, that little bit. Maybe there's some right here at the wing, I see. And definitely, definitely, we're going to want that darker value that's under that wing. So we're just working that out. Go ahead and. We've got flowers and everything here, so we're not going to worry too much about what's happening on that. Not too much. Right. Because it'll just mess us up. I'm going to get some of my brown and black. Come in here and start to talk about the shadows underneath that. All on my number four brush here. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Actually, mm -hmm. it was funny. Um, there were a couple people, but one I saw a specific message where someone thanked you for checking on them. Oh, you know, you're always like, "How y'all doing?" You do okay oh, there. Oh, I'm so glad. And so, I thought that was really nice. Well, it can be really freaky when you first take on a project. Right? It can be really intense. So figure out kind of what you've got going on and I know how that is. Yeah. When I first started doing this YouTube, it was really scary to paint live. You know, yeah. you just, you couldn't, you couldn't curate that experience. You couldn't fix, you know, an issue or repaint a thing. It just was what it was. But I started to realize there's some value in that fear. <laughs> you mean the fear of being live to have to perform in front of a whole bunch of people? Yeah, that one. No room for that error. That one. If anything goes wrong, it's all your fault. Well, and, and beyond that, you've got, you know, you've got, you know, people waiting in the wings, as you can imagine, who feel that they should be where you are. And <laughs> they're having to feel about it. So they want to come by and say, you suck. <laughs> you know, whatever makes them feel better. You're just lining that out. I am just adding these deep values because we know we've got, a couple little deep shadows in these feathers, and those are going to be a big deal. Yep. Catch, capturing where those dark values are and really getting those worked out is going to help us quite a lot when we're trying to determine the wing, way before we ever get into the pattern of the feathers and all of that. You know, and don't worry, we're still going to do our, we'll do our hour, we'll do that little power hour. Because we're not, you know, again, like everything else on you, it doesn't have a time frame here. Yeah. We're just painting along until the painting's done. You know, that's what we are. We're just painting along until the painting's done. Just trying to kind of get a sense of where these lines go, how they work. I don't usually paint wings in this much detail, but sometimes you've got to. To see the, to see the magic. Oh, oh, it's magic, I know. And it's fun. I like it. Hopefully you like it too. I do. <laughs> I love this little crazy f kind of, the tail is like has seen some problems. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of catch that on the feathers. It was like, 
Like everything is all smooth and sleek, and then the tail looks like it's been a little bit. If you can see this, a little bit electrocuted. Mm. <laughs> no, but on those little details, those are fun and enjoyable to add. They really are. Yeah, those are the end light feathers. They take the most use on the hard turn <laughs> from the air. And they got a bank. Thing. Well, some crazy farmers that think they're a transformed lady gonna get to get them. Well, you know that. Actually, I really doubt that. I imagine all farmers are like, "It's a bar now. Stop it." That seems like a city folk problem. <laughs> oh, the tip of your wings <laughs> travel the fast. I think farmers are like chupacabra, <laughs> which is like real, and don't mess with that. I'm from California. I'm telling you, it's real. Okay. Chupacabra. I believe. Eats goats. So really, it's a goat problem. But if you had goats, that's a big deal. Look. It's kind of like can, being a, a cow farmer and having an alien issue. You can, you can regularly find me and Muller out with a Polaroid. Watching. Squatching? <laughs> right. So... I'm finding the edges, the deep values, the shapes, and the structures. I'm going to sip my lemonade, and we're going to have a little moment. When you're doing things more realistically, the biggest obstacle to you and success is the fact that you've got to have patience. Like, you're going to paint, you're going to paint, you're going to paint, and you're going to paint, and you're going to paint, and paint, and paint, and paint, and paint, until you remember you got to stop. <laughs> And just relax and realize this is just a process. You have all the time you need. All of it. You can just look at your painting and munch a little biscuit and step across the room and step back and do a little dot of paint. The process, that's, a, that's the part that's for you. The result is like this thing that just kind of happens. But the process is about you. Yeah. Before I get on to the next layer, do you guys have any questions? Well, let's see here. I will, I will go see if there are any questions. You, we're gonna we, we're at uh, fifty two minutes for It'll our be a long show class today. today. Huh? <laughs> it might be a little bit longer today. I want to get some more of the Alan. It's just, okay. Just let you know. Okay. Where we're at here. I, I, you know what? I got lost in the background. It's a thing that happens. We got. I'm gonna add an extra little ten minutes to the thing. Yeah. No, I think um, Beth was just. I was just reading. Beth wanted to say thank you for taking the time to explain all this stuff because these nuances are really important. It was rather long comment so thank you very much Beth. you are so welcome they are important man it is not something you're going to catch in a time lapse something i catch in a time lapse though and how many hoots but your technique online i'm going to know it <laughs> <laughs> beware what so uh sage wanted to know how many sage. hoots you thought this would be bazillion d yeah no so where this painting is at is that you've really really been doing the paintings like many of you have a house full of paintings Put little hand emojis in the comments if you have a house full of paintings. Like you are almost thinking about hanging art on the ceiling because that's where your wall space is at. Mm -hmm. There's a closet you don't show to nobody. So when, you know, when you're going along and you've done all the techniques, you're ready to take on some challenges. And that's what these paintings are about. We put them in the three hoot scale, but the big art quest fairy tale is, let's call it beyond the hoot. Right? It's all the owls. All the yeah. owls are in your house. All of them. That doesn't mean that you can't do it right now. You're going to get something valuable out of it. Uh, we've got a group, the Big Art Quest. It's different than the Art Trip Official. We only post this stuff in there and telling you everybody gets something out of it. And I really want you to come in and post. Don't you be afraid. If I can show you my grid goof, you can come show me your painting. Yeah. There's no reason for you to be worried or embarrassed now. Lots of hands emojis coming up. <laughs> Oh, my, say, pa they... my patrons are about to get a sneak peek into the horde. <laughs> oh, that's true. Stacks. But we, stacks. Okay. We should paint so that you don't go too long. Sure. I don't mind going to, where are they going? They probably want to go back to work or go home or we'll do a little more feather for at least. We got to, we got a little more in there, right? I get some more feather in. So I'm going to get a little of my red and my burnt umber and it's kind of like a half step, the two of these together. Dirt and dirt. I'm going to come in here and uh, just keep. Finding those spaces, we can really talk about our feathers with. Have a feather conversation with me. The tinting white is like so great at this because it will help you lighten some of it 
without creaming it out, which is sort of nice. I really like that about it. And I'm going to do these strokes like they're feather strokes. Can you kind of see how I'm doing that? I do. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Sometimes. <laughs> I was about to do the witch from You have a marbled head. mix on your brush there. I do. Look at that. Look at that messy, messy paint. Now, why is that? Because it mixes on the canvas and those streaks and those little subtleties add dimension to my painting. Um, a lot of oil painters really detest that. It's like one of the things that they hate about acrylic. Because <laughs> acrylic painters do that. They're like, what is your plan? <laughs> to have fun and have my painting be done before your painting because your painting will never dry. <laughs> Sorry. There's a mild rivalry between acrylic artists and oil artists that may possibly come up in my class on occasion. <laughs> So now we're starting to block in that kind of nice, wonderful, rusty space of the wing, right? Yeah. Rusty wing, rusty wing. See, these broken wings don't know they just got good wings. Got good wings. Got wings, fluffy Bart. Got wings, fluffy Bart. I'm going to get one more level of white here. And then I'm probably going to get a lot into my tinting white, but this I'm going to kind of be coming out and doing. We are going to talk about some of these a little more specifically. See how we're doing? Yeah. Just over the top. This pressure is very light. And look, I worked that little tip right there. And really, my hardest part of this is staying out of John's way. No, you're doing good. <laughs> I'm just like trying to stay off camera with the side of my head. Every time I like see my, my, my lessons and my little hairs there, I'm like, oh! Sherpa, move it! So now we're starting to see those white feathers. Those Budafus, Budafus white feathers. Yeah. And you can even get really in there with some nice thick white paint and just pop that up. That's okay. You're just popping up those color spaces. Let's get back and see how we're doing. I'm doing good. He's getting, he's getting lighter. Yeah. And you want him to get lighter, right? You do. Adding another little layer of that white there. Maybe a little bit of that goes onto here. Just on the toe of my brush, lightening that up. Softening that transition. Oh, so nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 So mm -hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm paint a bird now. I paint this bird now. What'd you just put out there? I put out tint white. What is tint white? It's zinc white or mixing white. It's a very transparent white. You can see, like, it doesn't really change the color that you're working with. So what I often have to do is I'll have to wipe out the brush like that with my paper towel to make sure I don't have any extra pigment. So when I come to start to lighten some of this, it's a very subtle mix. Look how subtle that is. I love it so much. That's not even fair to use because it's like such a secret weapon. It is not a secret because I tell everybody about it. Here I come, here I come, here I come. So again, just creating the shape of that feather, but still keeping those values and those those feelings, those feelings together for your feathers. Feathers have feelings. Don't hurt them. And you can see, even if you go over your dark value, you don't take it out. Sorry, we're running over a little bit, guys, today. No, we're okay. just, uh, we'll go until I'm tired. <laughs> 
You know, oh, wait, that's not a good idea. We'll go until like you're tired. <laughs> we'll go until you're tired, yo. Well, we could we could catch the bird's wing, the uh, the wing in. Yeah, don't you think? We could get the wing in. Get we the get... wing in, man. Wing I it. just wanted to get him in today. We'll do that. That's a good, good get him in today. And see, that way, if someone just wanted to come in, they were like, well, today I learned how to do an owl. That's a good yeah, thing. Seriously, you will have learned, like, the owl. You will have gotten the owl. That's good. You will have. You will good. have gotten, like, like, the full owl. The full barn owl. Now, I'm stroking from here down because the fa- tail feathers are darker at the tip. And lighter at the top, and that's why I'm making that stroke that way. I'll add a little bit of this sort of sheen tint to that. And you can see as I'm tinting it, he just comes in, doesn't he? Just starting to come together, and it's like, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Make sure that those tough feathers have been beat up a little bit. All right. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt umber and my burnt sienna, and I make them sort of in the half step, like you, like you might have. And I'm going to get into my titanium white, which definitely is lighter. If I need to, I'll wet the brush to improve the flow. You could also use glazing medium, it's all fine. You're going to want to start to capture these little areas that are, that are maybe lighter than the rest of it. I like to make sure the edge of my brush is a little bit rough, as you can see there, so that there's almost like that structure of the feather constructed in the stroke. Right. Adding those little, those little bits. Get those little bits in. Little bit, little bit. Ooh. There we go, a little highlight there. There's a great little bit of feather that kind of comes there that we don't want to lose. Little fuzzy feather. Fuzzy little feather. Fuzzy feather. A little bit of fuzzies there. A little bit of fuzzies here. Look at those fuzzy. End of the tails have fuzzies. Rude mice run. That's what he says. The rude mice run often. Adding more white, I'm really kind of getting a lighter aspect right here. And you're going to want to just make sure that you are you know, maybe highlighting it. And if my white is too gummy, which this one is starting to get, guess what I do? Wait, that's, that's the tinting white. I'm not going to do that one. I need the mega tube. Mega tube. Fresh so white. sometimes I keep my energy up because uh, you really, really don't want to go to sleep. I, right, well. <laughs> and well, some painting? some of the painting videos, I don't know about you, are wonderful and terrific and tremendous and also are like just absolutely going to put me to sleep in like two seconds. Snooze fest. They're so calming. It was real funny. Like we noticed you can tell which ones it is because we have this thing that like lets us know um, if a video has recommended one of our videos. Like if somebody went from watching it another video to our video, right? It tells us that. And then it says how long they stayed. And there's certain videos where people stay like all night. And we realized what was happening is people were falling asleep on their videos. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so- like that group of people thought my videos were so great that they just watched them for hours at a time. It was that they had just fallen asleep on this other person's video. Yeah. So, <laughs> And we were like, oh, another way to get watch time. Put people to sleep. But you know what, Sherpa? The sound of your voice puts me to sleep every night. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's is, awesome. Is it good? Yeah, I don't good. think I put anybody to sleep. You're just the foot rub puts you to sleep. That's what's putting you to sleep. Not the not my voice. I don't see my voice as particularly calming. No, 
I don't think it's very it's a very rare person who goes I like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> but I mean, I I read the comments. I I, I think that the internet sometimes concurs. <laughs> you know. Well, there's a certain. You know, I'm not offended. It doesn't freak me out. I got a block button. I mean, you cause enough trouble in my world. I I have the power to be like, okay, no more. <laughs> that is the amount of trouble I'm willing to deal with today. That's true. So I'm creating little highlights, and I'm just trying to make sure that we've got this sort of little transitional blend. And we're gonna hit these little patterns in a minute, and then the wings are gonna just be like, whoa. Cool. And just like, is it done yet? Not done. Owl's very involved today. No, that's right. John's actually not like that. I'm so what it is, I'm anxious that you're like, man, why isn't it done? So she's So I talk to John is a sort of transference way to directly talk to you. So I'm now guiltily responsible for all of Cinnamon's anxieties. Because isn't that what we do to our partners? We project. You guys have such a window into our marriage. Right now. You just don't have the car window. Which is really unfair. Because if you had the car the, window, you'd be like, oh, she's a saint. The, the, uh, I'm going to add a little white back here. Can you see? I'm just feathering that into the making, tail right there. Sh- you're making like uh, feather strokes. Yeah. Shapes. We're just feather. trying to get those feather shapes and strokes. But see, it's starting to really pull it together, isn't it? It really is. No. 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 We have this other really hard little job to do. We're going to take a little bit of our black. Maybe this time we'll put a little bit of our blue. This is a good time to use your tinting white. I'm going to talk a little bit about on the tip of this brush. You could use a detail round if you don't have this brush. All right. Some of that pattern that is so clearly on the wing. So how I'm doing is I'm just wiggling the brush back and forth, letting it deposit little kind of little dots of pigment. And when my brush gets dry, dip in the water, go back and forth, and pick up some more. It can really be more black. It's okay. It will sometimes dry right on my uh, brush as I'm painting, so I have to go back and, and reload it. Doing that. There's some nice little sort of little bits here. And talk about a bit. Brush water. Brush water paint. Brush water paint. There we go. A little more black. I like that. Nice to change it up. That's cool, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it pretty strongly down here. You just see me really, really like finding the line of a feather and then hitting this sort of like camouflage pattern. Yeah, it's getting done there. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> and come right here and be like, doo, 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 doo. this one will come when I put the white in. But we want that there. Do, 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 do. Whenever I'm going along, it's George, George, George of the Jungle, which apparently doesn't have content ID on YouTube, or more likely, I sing so badly it doesn't matter. Mm. But I don't care. I've got a song in my heart, so. (laughs) (laughs) So Adding those little awesome little bits, right? Yeah. Coming in anywhere, I can just find some of these in the feathers. I'm just putting them there real loose. That's nice. All there. And then sometimes they've got little ridges across here. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about that. Look at that. That's yeah, pretty cool. I just kind of capture the, the essence of it, right? Yeah. Get the essence of owl. You don't want to get owl essence on you. <laughs> it's better than deer pee, right? Deer pee? 
than DP. Dear that's, P. You could buy that stuff in, in don't Walmart, buy DSP, which is that's scary. A, that's like, a black intern. That's a dark web kind of thing. That, no. And like you can get editor <laughs> like coyotes, like have a good life apparently because that they you take their their urine and scare snakes away with it. I was like But don't doesn't I didn't we have that I, friend that, that would like pee all around the campsite to try to get stuff not to enter the campsite? I, you know You know who that was effective on? Us. This That's a, who that worked on. I don't know if it worked on nature, but it kept us from going in the campsite. <laughs> it's true. We're like, oh, this is well, an there art you go. YouTube show. Check you, that out because we awesome. I'm gonna get back and check him in. Take okay. him in. Take him in. Take him in because he's amazing. I think it looks pretty amazing. He's turned out really nice. Now, I could thin my paint a ton. Or I could stop aggravating myself and put out some of my fluid paint. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Cool? Okay. And I will just... Oh, yeah. Add some little white dots using this wonderful fluid paint, which is super highly pigmented. And will pop right off my canvas. You can just thin your white paint. I won't like kick you out of the group. Be like, you didn't do it. I mean, treat yourself and get yourself some if you can. But it's all good either way. This is going to be the coolest painting when she's done. When she's done, she's going to be like, sure, but get it. And everyone who like completed her, they'll be like, I was there. Were you there? I was there. I was there when the Sherpa went fully crazy. <laughs> remember the owl? Yeah, I remember the owl. That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was going on with her? I don't know. I don't know. Thought for years she was off. For years. Put some little white dots down through here. Isn't that nice? So nice. And he's feeling quite beautiful now. He's saying, oh, thank you. I like my little pretty spots. My spots, they're very helpful mm -hmm. when hiding from my so I can eat them. I like to eat mice. You can be like, do you? Do you like to eat some mice? And then we'll just make sure that there's some of this, right? I mean, we've got it. We might as well. Yeah. Oh, guys. What do you think? Well, before we go. I'm going to tip this with a little extra white because it's going to really make that little tail pop. Sorry, you have to do it. This really turned out nice. And I'll just capture these. Just See, I add the little tiniest little hair of Yeah. my feathers are messed up. It's just. Fantastic. I love it. I paint him all day, though. You should, you should know. I can just paint him all day. I could go another six hours just on him. But I'm going to restrain myself. I'm going to show restraint, but not that much restraint. You're about to tell me something, and I totally interrupted you, babe. Oh, no, you're good. What was it? Before we go. Where, we... where are we going? I'm still painting it now. <laughs> You're so cute. Before we go. Oh, I sure, thought you, were... you got. No, I am wrapping up. Okay, thought so. I just want to make sure I wasn't like misreading. No, you're good. Well, I want to make sure we get a, a little happy birthday in. Happy birthday? Who are we saying happy birthday to, Colleen? Mm hmm. Happy birthday, Colleen. Happy birthday to you. It's not like Marilyn singing to the president, but you get what you get. You don't get upset. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> that turned out pretty good. I like the little wing tip. Yeah, you just gotta. Yeah, you just gotta. All right, I'm gonna stop fiddling before I do something super tragic. So this took a while. It turned out really nice. But it turned out nice. Oh, there's my hair. See, then I'll be like later. I'll be like. Ah! Everybody commented they liked your hair. Oh, thank you. They really did. They thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm always like, do I need to go blue? Where awesome. are you going? Oh, am I going for it? Okay, I'll go How for it. Are you going for it? Hey! Whoosh. That turned out pretty good. So, look at us. We've busted hump and we have a background twice. 
And now we have a pretty decent owl sitting here looking at us being really fantastic. Yeah. When we get her in and we get her nailed, you guys are going to love it because we're really, really going to do like what we did with the flower elf, like on her face. We're really focused on that and really get that and get the freckles and all the beautiful effects in. Um, and we're just going to take as long on this painting as we need to to get it right. So all my other stuff, you know, we got to feed the bees, and take care of the algorithm and all the stuff that YouTube needs. But the big art quest is just about the painting. It's just about the result. It's just about you. I know I'm goofy during the quest, but sometimes we got to keep our energy up because these lessons are long and they're grueling and your doubt demon wants to come up and tell you that you can't do this, that everyone else in the room is going to do it, but you're not. And you need to stomp on its little head like it's bunny foo Stomp it! Be like, Sherpa says, I can do it! Art high five! Art high five! <laughs> Be good to yourself! Woo -woo. Be good to each other! And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye! Bye!